Okay. Uh, cool. So we are going to move to the demo part of the meeting. Uh, Matt is going to present a demo about Mink, and I think you should be able to share your screen. So feel free to test that. All right. So hold on. Let me make the little like people window small so that I can see my screen. Can everyone see? Uh, my screen, I'm sharing my whole screen because I'm going to um, uh, jump between windows as part of the domain, or uh, sorry, demo. <laughs> um, okay, so Mink, um, hopefully we get through it all. I have a whole bunch of stuff that I want to demo. Um, so apologies if I talk fa fast, um, but uh, okay. So what is Mink? Uh, Mink is really sort of two things. Um, it started out as sort of a, a little distribution that was intended to sort of showcase how with our, our controller architecture, you can take the set of things that we ship as like a whole bunch of independent things upstream and shrink wrap them into, you know, much smaller form factor for how you want to uh, ship uh, Knative downstream. And so uh, we'll, we'll see that in just a second. And then the other piece is um, a CLI that started with me uh, sort of uh, wanting to try out the KN plugin model, um, but also start to sort of think about um, things you could do with the set of components that have been shrink wrapped into Mink um, to sort of tie together, you know, the things that, you know, we, we try and keep sort of uh, um, at arm's length upstream, like serving and eventing and uh, the artist formerly known as build, which uh, is Tekton. So uh, I'm going to switch over to my console here. So one of the things, this is a long command, but um, I, I can talk while it runs. So uh, we're going to run mink install command. Um, this is just going to set up the components on the cluster that are correspond to the release of the CLI that's been installed. Um, I haven't yet set it up to do anything with uh, DNS, so I'm going to patch the um, mink.dev domain into this and then print the service so we can set up DNS. So while that's running, I'll- So we don't see your screen, Matt. You don't see I, my- I, I do. I see it. Oh. I see it. Yeah, we see it. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna, I'm gonna keep talking. Hopefully it's on the recording. Um, so this this is a local build of it. So it's installing it from you know something that was built locally. If you were running the release, this would, um, be installing from the latest uh, or the GitHub release corresponding to the Mink build. Um, this is running uh, uh, against an EKS cluster, and you can see it spun up um, a couple control plane uh, pods uh, and then a couple data plane pods. The control plane pods are running, uh, serving uh, with net contour, uh, contour eventing with uh, the multi tenant uh, broker, the sugar controller, and all the core sources. Um, and then the data plane is running all of the things that we have on uh, the data path in Knative. So activator, the envoys uh, for your ingress, um, uh, the activator, et cetera. Um, and then it also installed the in-memory controller, uh, or sorry, in I always say in-memory controller, in-memory channel um, as well. So I printed out the um, services so that I could set up a little C name rule real quick. Um, so I'll plop that in. And so um, if we take a look at this, right, um, let's see, 33. So in about 40 seconds, it installed basically the entire Mink control plane, data plane, um, the uh, in-memory channel, and you know, uh, all it waits for all of that to be up and ready. Um, and so all of that is now running on my EKS cluster here. Uh, and then uh, DNS should be set up now. It runs TLS by default. So, okay. So it, we just installed a whole bunch of stuff and it's actually not running that many things. The, the three control plane nodes and the four data plane nodes is because it um, uh, installs uh, in a, an HA configuration by default. So the, the control plane is running as a stateful set that distributes the keys over those replicas. Um, and the data plane's running as a daemon set. So if we were running this on a, a one node cluster, that would shrink down and scale up as your cluster scales up. So, uh, okay, so let's see. Um, so now 
that I have all of those things installed on my cluster, right? The next thing uh, that um, I wanted to do was start to play with um, basically deploying, uh, you know, leveraging the fact that all of those things are there to make it really easy to get started and deploy things to that cluster, right? So I affect, so I'm in the docs repo here, um, and I effectively wanted to be able to write something like KN serve it, service create hello, uh, and I, you know, deploy my, you know, hello world go sample. But, you know, we run into this thing where it's like, okay, image, right? And now I need to be able to build this Docker file and, and you know, uh, do all that. So with TechCon available, right, I can do builds against this cluster. And so um, basically uh, there's this mink build command where you can tell it what directory to build. And let's see. Um, it's a long path, so I gotta concentrate. Uh, hello world, hello, go. Okay, so just, just um, note, uh, Matt, you've got a typo now. Director equals docs. Seven, 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 thank you. Uh, it's way worse if the typo is in the other half of the command because it doesn't tell you till the build completes. <laughs> but thank you, Jacques. Uh, so okay, I'm gonna kick that off. Um, so what this is going to do, right, is uh, what, uh, let me show what's running over here. What this is doing is it's basically taking that directory, it's uploading it to a registry that I've configured. I think I'm using uh, uh, GitHub's container registry uh, and uh, as a self-extracting container image and then runs uh, that as the first step in a task run uh, before tonic uh, Conico, which does the Docker file build. You can see the output streaming here to standard error. Um, and I've redirected standard out, which is going to be the image digest to KN service create. So as soon as this is done, um, this is going to, you can see the build here running on the uh, cluster. As soon as this is done, um, uh, we will see KN uh, kick off and start to deploy. I'm just moving the zoom things out of my way so I can see this. Uh, and in just a moment, this will return. Um, I'm going to wait a little bit longer because uh, this didn't give me the TLS uh, URL. Uh, you can see it's configuring the HTTPS challenge. And hopefully in just a second, this will give me uh, the HTTPS URL. We'll see how fast Let's Encrypt is today. Um, Usually it's, uh, there we go. So if we copy this URL and curl it, right? Boom, hello world. So, okay, these things have been up for about five minutes. So in five minutes, we went from blank Kubernetes cluster to <laughs> running all of serving, eventing, Tecton uh, with TLS, DNS, and built from source and deployed. Uh, an image. Um, so one more thing. Uh, <laughs> let's see. So if I dump the service that we just deployed um, and I grab the image that it's running and look at it in Crane, If you were watching carefully, you might have picked this up, but I'm actually running this all on a Graviton EKS cluster, right? So this is all running on ARM, right? It's running uh, the the, the self-extracting uh, source context was uploaded multi-arch. It runs multi-arch Conico image. It's running all the multi-arch, um, you know, Envoys, uh, all the Knative and Tecton components, and so uh, basically, you know, it installs on whichever flavor of cluster you want. The one thing that doesn't work, which is going to be the next part of the demo, um, is unfortunately build packs. And I think that's mostly because I'm not aware of anyone who has yet um, produced an ARM64 uh, build pack builder. Um, but uh, for that, we're going to switch over to uh, a GKE cluster for the rest of my demo. And GK runs a lot of stuff. So I'm just going to show the default namespace for this one. Um, but this, I've installed Mink on this cluster already. And um, yeah, so, but nothing is running. If I say kube cuddle get um, k service, all namespaces, there's, there's no um, k native services deployed or anything yet. 
So, okay, so build paths. Um, so if, if I could just do the same old demo with um, the docs repo and replace mink build with mink build packs, or sorry, mink build pack, and it would do a build pack build of that same hello world go sample. And it works, it wouldn't leverage the Docker file. Um, and you know, through the magic of build packs, it would detect, hey, it's go and do the right thing and build a go uh, container image which is pretty nice. Um, but one of the nice things about build pack that uh, is that a lot of folks are starting to leverage it for um, higher level experiences. So instead of producing um, uh, you know, applications where you have to write the HTTP server and uh, deal with all that, you, know, you just write a function. And then uh, as part of the build pack lifecycle, it gets wrapped up uh, in the HTTP server and you don't worry about it. You just deal with functions and deploy that. Um, so uh, I wanted to show uh, some of that, uh, but as folks go from sort of monolithic apps to microservices to functions, right? You also go from really writing one thing to writing tens of things to writing hundreds of things, right? And the complexity sort of shifts around, right? So generally when you're dealing with, when you were dealing with one monolith, right? You're now dealing with quite a few functions, right? And so I didn't wanna just demo something like Mink Build Pack where you're iterating on a single thing, which you can do as I, we just showed a second ago. I wanted to um, think through what it was like to deploy sort of a full logical application, which may consist of um, a number of different functions um, and other things like sources and whatnot, and are all sort of wired together in terms of, uh, yeah, you, know, you know, triggers and events and whatnot. So, uh, okay, so I have a little sample here. Um, uh, basically what we're gonna do here is we're just gonna run mink apply. And then uh, this is going, I'm, I'll talk through what this is gonna do while it's running. Um, takes about a minute and a half. Uh, if history is any indicator, it spits out some errors because it tries to detect the user to run as, but ignore that, that's a, uh, GCP builder thing. I'm, so I'm using the GCP build packs here for node as you can, uh, oh, I didn't put it in the uh, repo name here. Uh, it's in the repo name here. Okay, so this is what we're deploying right now. So uh, I'm using Scotty's little graph tool to visualize this. It's not running on the cluster now, but it was obviously when I took the screenshot. Um, so basically that one command uh, is basically deploying um, a whole bunch of stuff. So it's it's deploying a ping source um, that dumps events onto the default broker. It's deploying Sockeye, which is uh, unfiltered and going to let us um, uh, visualize the events flowing through the system. And then it's going to deploy five functions, um, which uh, key off of the ping events that come off the ping source, um, and do some simple mutation to the event and dump it back on the broker so that we can see what they did. Um, so it's a pretty simple uh, toy app, but one of the things that I wanted to sort of demonstrate is how, how small we can get the sort of incremental cost of adding new functions to the system, right? Um, and so you can see here, okay, all the builds just completed um, and then it applied a whole bunch of stuff. And you can see over here, that's good timing. It's all, I didn't even rehearse that. All right, so uh, you can see here, it's spinning up all these functions here. Um, and if I refresh Sockeye, um, it should uh, be up. And uh, the ping source fires every minute. Good timing. Okay, so hopefully everything was wired up when that fired. Uh, it looks like a couple things were still wiring up, but the ping source produces this fixed payload with A is a number, B is another number, uh, 11 and 3. And then each of the little functions responding to this, you can see this is exponent. It does A to the B and then returns it to the uh, broker and B is B to the A. Um, so each of these does just a, a little trivial transformation of the event and drops it back on the broker. I did the same schema so you could chain these things together and sort of play with um, triggers and different orders and whatnot. But um, really the uh, amount of code you end up writing for these things is very, very small. So let's take a look at that. Uh, so if we go into, for instance, the add function, right? So there's there's three files in here and it's more or less the same three files in each of the functions. Um, they're very uniform. Um, so if we look at the actual uh, index dot, 
JS, uh, I, I am a node noob, so please don't judge my uh, terrible node. Um, but there's a simple little uh, mutation function here that takes in uh, the JSON payload. Um, and you can see, you know, adds that returns something with A and B, where A is just A plus B of what comes in, and B is A minus B of what comes, comes in. And all of these are just trivial little things that do stuff like that. Um, and then this is what we actually um, wrap as a function, which um, basically applies that mutation here um, to a cloud event that comes in and then returns it with a new cloud event. And this, this uh, changes the type, so it tells us what function really reacted to it so that we can visualize that on Sockeye. Um, the next bit of what's going on here is um, overrides the tunnel. So this is a little bit of the duct tape showing through in terms of how I put some of it together. So this mirrors the construct of project.toml in build pack. So you can see I'm using the Google functions build pack and telling it to use the add function. Um, uh, this is, you know, build packs right now, um, and really this is the pack CLI has this concept of project.toml, but it doesn't really have a, a way, a good way, in my opinion, to um, deal with sort of producing n things from a single repo. So that's where this override toml thing comes in. And then uh, service.yaml. So here's where the magic happens. So a lot of this idea of sort of trying to squeeze the incremental complexity came from some of the learnings we have with um, Co. And so with Co, like I think um, hopefully we've reached the point where a lot of folks within the community sort of appreciate that you know at producing new containers is um, you know a very low barrier to entry, and that's not really what folks think of as the release artifacts anymore. We think of things like the, the resolved YAMLs. So you can see in this YAML, um, this one piece of magic here where um, sort of extending the idea of the, the co URIs, um, where I say co import path, um, mink, mink apply and mink resolve supports, um, it actually supports co, uh, but also build pack and Docker file. So you can, um, take the sort of co workflow and use it to um, uh, build things with, for many languages with build packs um, or Docker files and start to leverage some of the stuff in build packs um, like function frameworks to build higher level experiences. So what this is basically saying is within the, within the context of the sort of dash dash directory bundle that's uploaded, um, build the, uh, for, for build pack, build the override toml um, within the add directory. Um, and so each of the functions is going to specify the path to their config file for build pack that does that. If you were, if we were to use Docker file here, um, it would effectively be the directory in which to find the Docker file. And co, it's um, compatible with co. So, um, so this is cluster local service. Um, it's setting up a trigger on the default broker and it has the ping filter here. If we were to change this, since this is add, if we were to change this to divide, we would start to sort of um, chain together our events into a, a deeper chain than the sort of flat thing we have uh, right now. Um, and then this delivers uh, the events to the add function. Um, I think it would be super cool to see this go away with something like Scotty's auto trigger, but um, uh, but yeah, right now uh, this is actually a, a surprising amount of YAML, but like to do this in, in vanilla Kates would be uh, much, much, much more complex. So, um, okay. So I think we got, so let's see all of the functions firing. Um, they should have all fired by now. Okay, so random basically uses um, the inputs to bound generating random numbers. We see divide here. We see swap just transposes them. Uh, we already saw exponent add is 11 plus three and 11 minus three. Uh, yeah, and divide is 11 divided by three, 11 mod three. So all super simple little functions, but you know, uh, I got bored of adding them after uh, five. So, <laughs> uh, so yeah, but uh, you know, the overhead of each of them got squeezed, I think, pretty low. Uh, I see a lot of things in chat. I don't know if folks are adding uh, or asking me things, but uh, I think that's all I had for the screen share unless folks had questions. So uh, I am happy to open it up for questions and hopefully I covered everything I meant to cover. 
Thank you so much, Matt. Uh, yeah, <laughs> I think my mic is working. Um, let me see. I'm going to change the view. Oh, great. Thank you. Um, do we have any comments to discuss this demo as a group right now? Any questions? I saw some questions on the on the chat. Um, so maybe Alec, if you want to speak up, if that's a possibility for you, would you like to ask your questions? Sure, I can speak up. Uh, it's it's just a very basic uh, question. So like there is a lot of functionality. At the beginning, you were saying it's a, like a distribution. So how is it different from what is today uh, if you install Knative and Tekton in some cluster? There is some additional functionality that you add, like support for build packs. Something so that's that's a, that's a good question. Um, so um, so if you were to install all the upstream stuff, right? We you know upstream is very unopinionated, right? We we ship serving core, we ship um, net Istio, we ship Istio. They're you know all basically uh, in separate YAMLs, run as separate things, and we do that because it's very unopinionated, right? Like we don't want to. Um, sort of guide your hand towards, um, you know, one option or the other, right? Like they're all great choices, um, but there's, it leads to complexity setting things up, right? You have to make a whole bunch of choices, right? Which, which channel do I want to use? Which broker do I want to use? Which um, ingress do I want to use? Do I want to set up TLS and whatnot, right? So, um, so what Mink does is it basically, um, uh, takes a position on some of those sort of getting started uh, opinions um, and glues them together in a way where it's not distributing, you know, different YAML, different deployment, different whatnot for all of those things. Um, and it's shrink wrapped into effectively a single um, controller process that handles all of it, right? Um, the uh, APIs that are exposed and everything uh, is identical to upstream. It, it is identical. It does. It exposes zero additional APIs over um, Knative serving and Knative eventing. Um, so, uh, shout out to Carlos. So, I believe on um, last Friday, Carlos, uh, I believe, managed to deploy this sample, the Mink apply Node.js sample, um, to OpenShift serverless using OpenShift pipelines. Right. So. Um, in terms of the server side bits, it's it's a shrink wrapped set of things, but like there are no additional APIs. So things like doing the build packs, it's it's really just creating a task run directly that invokes the appropriate container images using Tekton APIs. Um, and uh, yeah, so and, and you don't have to deploy Knative services with it. So one of my uh, fun um, things to beat on this is since it supports Co, actually part of the reason I added Co was like, I wanted to make sure it worked. So um, I build Mink with Mink. So, uh, <laughs> so Mink builds with Co, but then once it's deployed, you can then use Mink to then rebuild Mink since Mink apply supports Co prefixes. Um, uh, so, you know, that's, I think that, does like 20 co-published builds. Um, and I have the same test for um, uh, Docker files too, um, where it self-hosts Mink with Mink. Um, build packs uh, doesn't quite work for reasons. Um, and it's mostly related to how we assume Co has laid things out certain ways, which it's hard to get build packs to lay things out the same way. Um, but uh, yeah. Yeah, maybe I will ask, uh, first of all, really awesome little thing, little mink, <laughs> I would say, but uh, yeah, but uh, let me rephrase the, the same question, actually, because I'm wondering, uh, is it actually a toy for you or experiment or do you want want to support that? What, what, what is your plan with that? So, so that's, that's a good question. Um, so um, there's a there's an open issue right now to sort of um, move it into sandbox and um, sort of support it better. Uh, so it's not in Matt Moore Mink, um, but um, I, I think there's some interesting questions about um, 
you know, the home and how we how we tie some of it together. Oh, I forgot my my <laughs> my cheesiest little anecdote. So I said I started the Minx CLI to play with um, KN plugins. So it turns out KN IM is Mink backwards. So you can also invoke it all through KN IM. <laughs> um, but um, yeah, I was invoking it through Mink out of out of habit. Um, so uh, yeah, so so there's a few interesting things, right? So um, things like Mink apply actually don't need Knative running on the cluster unless you're going to target Knative services. Um, it just happens that Knative services are probably one of the best ways, in my opinion. You know, I'm a little biased uh, to run the sorts of functions and whatnot that um, you know come out of stuff like build packs. Um, uh, so, you know, that, that might even make more sense in the context of something like uh, the Tekton CLI. Um, but um, I, think, um, I think the idea of having sort of a nice getting started experience, um, you know, where, you know, folks can very easily get up and running with a thing um, and uh, have things that start to tie together some of these different um, pieces of um, sort of user experience that really, you know, I, I think that we are starting to realize the sort of potential of what we set out to do three years ago with build and serving and eventing to sort of tie, start to tie together sort of function style experiences um, on top of Knative. So I, I'm super stoked to see this and I'm, I'm uh, interested in sort of discussing how we make it real. You know, I've been starting to poke at the topic of like, you know, should we be talking about sort of standard build packs for cloud events? Since a lot of folks have jumped onto that back bandwagon, and that conversation may actually, you know, since a lot of folks here uh, are interested in that, it may actually make more sense to have that conversation in the context of something like the build pack community or the serverless working group. Um, but, um, uh, but yeah. Um, but it's something that could be leveraged in the context of this, right? Like I, this is this is not running like my crazy build packs. That demo was using the GCP build packs. I Mink uses the, I think Paketo build packs by default. I'm, I'm testing it with uh, both of those and the Boson build packs that the OpenShift folks have been doing, but um, you know, they're all running slightly different build packs. So I'm not keeping up with chat. It's there's a whole. I think it, there are a few questions from Michael. Michael, would you like to unmute? Um, sure. This is Max. Um, so, I guess the, the quick question is: Is Matt, um, you know about the source to image work that Red Hat and a few others are doing, right? Yeah. Yeah. So I guess you could integrate that easily there too, right? Instead of kicking off. Tecton. I guess they, they're doing the work to, um, you know, build pack like, uh, convert your directory into an image. Yeah. yeah. So, so, uh, the can fast, I'm pretty sure is using pack under the hood locally. And I'm not going to lie. Um, I, I don't have Docker locally and I don't want Docker locally. So I'm a big fan of <laughs> being able to run all I've been reviewing, uh, things like all the cloud event go and blah, blah, blah samples. Uh, I, I reviewed all those PRs by like cloning folks uh, uh, repos and then, you know, mink build, build the build pack and deploy it with KN. Um, so I, I am a big fan of not having to run Docker locally. Um, but I think, you know, being able to leverage something like pack for local um, as well, I think makes a lot of sense too for folks who, you know, are into that. But um, but yeah, so like, I, I mean, here's here's a fun one, right? Um, uh, what happens when folks are using um, different hardware locally, right? Then, yeah. you know, thank, thank you, Apple, for that M1 problem, right? Um, this would run fine on uh, that because I don't need Docker locally. Uh, I It stitches together the build context and everything co-style um, and again, multi-arch. So, you know, uh, assuming um, you know, the actual build process you're invoking can run on that cluster. Uh, you know, it, it just works. Um, I think Konica's multi-arch is only AMD64 and ARM64 right now, but it's pretty trivial to produce, to add architectures to that. I think the, the main thing is testing. Um, 
the the co image that's being produced is uh, the, based on the GoLang image. So it has so many architectures. Um, and then, okay. like I said, with build packs, the the main thing is. I just don't know of a multi-arch build pack to play with. Otherwise, I think it would work. Um, so okay, that's fair. I, I had a, one more question, but maybe you can be quick in the, the answer because there's other people that have questions. Um, <laughs> so I, I'm just wondering your vision for this. Do you do you intend to have kind of you, do you see multiple you know distribution that people will do depending on how they use Knative or or yeah. maybe modified version of Mac. I mean, like yeah, so kind of what's your vision? That's that's a, that's a good question, right? So, so uh, this this was very intentionally created outside of Knative um, when I first started it because um, you know I, I view upstream as very unopinionated, right? And you know we don't want things under Knative to really be you know biasing towards you know one option or another option, right? So. With some of the clarity around things like sandbox, right? Um, you know, I see it sort of like, um, you know, kind in Minikube. I I fully expect that folks will have different opinions from you know what's bundled in here. Um, but like I said, it started as a way of sort of showing folks that you can do this. Um, and you know, it, it, a lot of what we did was sort of designed to be able to recombine these things downstream. So like you know, if uh, you know, Google is very, or IDM is very committed to saying, hey, you know, we know that the distribution we're going to ship is always going to have Istio, right? They can basically combine those things together and not have to run additional stuff on your cluster, you know, if uh, they can be combined and, you know, shrink the footprint ever so slightly. It turns out it's not that slightly when you're running serving and ingress and TLS and, um, all eventing and sugar controller and the multi -time and don't, don't forget testing also so uh, yeah yeah so all right thank uh, you man appreciate it yeah i, I want to give other people a chance to to ask you questions that's why <laughs> love I the think, answers though. thank you max uh, uh i think omar has uh, other questions as well yeah uh i think sort of along the same lines um i guess like do you envision this or something like it to be sort of the first meaningful interaction that new folks would have with Knative? Uh, and then piggybacking off that, if your answer is yes, like, have you tested this with like Minikube? So like I could like, because I'm imagining like you would basically go to the Knative website and be like, oh, this is, I'll just get started with this. Like, is that the idea? Um, so I, I don't know. It's a, it's a good question. Um, I mean, I, I uh, think it's a possibility, um, but you know, I think it'll depend on sort of what other distributions crop up, right? So we've talked about sort of a starter distribution in the past, um, which might just have the Knative bits, right? Like the, one of the opinions that this has, right, is it pulls in Tecton, right, which um, you know moved out of the house a couple of years ago, so you know it's it's not Knative anymore. Um, but um, so it, it may be that we want that getting started experience to be focused on just Knative bits. Um, but uh, you know, I, I think that ultimately, you know, it's uh, it's something that I, you know I I would ask the community, you know, what we think the sort of first experience folks should have is. Um, but uh, I I certainly enjoy it, and I'm trying to make it sort of simple to get started on one night. Um, so you you asked about Minikube. Um, I haven't tried Minikube, um, but uh, I have a whole bunch of end-to-end -end tests with this running against Kind um, mm -hmm. on GitHub Actions, which is awesome um, <laughs> and free, and runs a lot of testing for it. Um, and so you know, Mink install is bootstrapping you know the little Kind cluster. Uh, with Mink, but it is, you know, there's a whole bunch of sort of kind set up to that. I think it'd be interesting to play around with um, having something that uh, enabled you to do something like kind create cluster locally um, uh, and, you know, bootstrap a whole K native environment from nothing sort of, um, excuse me. Um, sort of like Mink install, but like Mink create me a whole little kind cluster sort of thing. Um, but um, I don't have Docker locally, so it's hard to develop uh, stuff that works with kind. <laughs> Fair enough. Thank you. 
I think next is Jules. Uh, no, that was more of a comment. Alec had a question. Alec, would you like to speak up? Oh, yeah, no, Jules, Jules had a quick question. Uh, oh, is there sorry. equivalent to co-resolve? Yeah, you can use mink resolve and it builds with co or Docker file or build pack and gives you the YAML. Um, so if, if in principle you wanted to bootstrap a new um, cluster with that sample I built, you could, uh, and you had pre-built it. Oh, I, you can also use this to separate out build from deploy, which is another key thing, um, right? Just like we co-resolve once, ship a release YAML and people can install that on many, many, many clusters. You can use mink resolve to go build these things on a build cluster, take the YAML and then deploy that to one or more clusters um, that are separate. Um, you can also do that with the composition. If you pass different build contexts to, uh, or sorry, kube context to mink build and kn. Um, I don't know that I've plumbed it through mink, so I'm hoping kn has <laughs> plumbed that through. But you know, those are other things where you can start to sort of split that, split the build and um, deploy clusters apart. Um, but uh, yeah, mink resolve works and. Um, So uh, there was I think we have, yeah, we have Alec, and then uh, we have one more question. We have a raised hand, but first let's go to Alec's question. Alec, would you like to unmute? I think it's me again, so sorry about it. Uh, that is just a, uh, <laughs> when I hear that build pack make everything easier, I built non-trivial applications with build pack, and I fight it with all the updates to build packs, like libraries and whatnot. So I wonder what is your, you know, experience, especially about like, you know, you deploy something. Oh, it's not working because build pack was changed. Oh, that's a very good question. And you're, you're asking a co junkie. So I, I love co, um, but you know, people are always like, but I don't want to write stuff in, in go. And so this, this brings co, the co sort of experience to other languages. Build packs, you know, I think, um, yeah, one of the things I've struggled with too is repos with a whole bunch of stuff building out of the same repo. Um, uh, but, you know, I think it's one of the things where, you know, as applications shrink and you have microservices and functions, you aren't going to want a whole new repo for every function that you build. And so I, I think build packs is going to have to um, evolve a little bit to be able to produce things out of more complex repos and deal with some of that complexity better. In terms of you know, changing libraries, and I don't know if your comment was about the rebasing stuff, um, but there are a bunch of other fancy things around build packs that um, uh, you know, I, I think things like rebasing rely on like ABI guarantees. In terms of the same build not working, I think my thought would be that if you use the same builder, I, I would expect some amount of determinism there. Um, but um, you know, if you use a tag, then it's sort of YOLO mode. Um, uh, but um, and you might get different results build to build. But um, yeah, I I don't have a ton of in depth experience with build packs to really comment on it. Um, Alec, I think you're probably thinking of uh, like the Cloud Foundry experience where... Uh, or, or in general, if you push non-trivial code into somewhere, possibly multiple locations that have different setup, like one is Mink, another maybe something else. How do I know, you know, that everything works the way that it's supposed to, unless I tested it with exact version and can guarantee that in every location it will be running exactly the same. So, yes, right. Describe think, containers, no? I think that's one of the intents of things like co-resolve and mink resolve, right? So that you can basically, you know, mink apply and co-apply is great for development, right? Because I can build and deploy my entire application like in one go, right? But it's not what you want for release, right? You want you want to be able to sort of build the thing, qualify the thing in one place, and then uh, deploy it to other places. And so being able to separate those is, um, I think, very intentional. And, um, you know, because you're doing it by digest, you know, resolve, I'm, I am big digest Kool-Aid person. Um, so everything's by digest. So it's not going to change out from under you uh, unless you go into the YAMLs and you change it. Um, so, uh, you know, the, the YAML should work everywhere. I mean, the main thing will be if, well, 
I, I won't go into the, the crazy. I feel like I, uh, being forced into the position defending bill packs, which is never something I want to uh, be doing. Uh, but uh, I, uh, cloud native bill packs, the, the more modern bill packs, do result in container images, right? Like it, the old kind of bill packs were pretty opaque, and you sort of threw your code in there and hoped it still worked, um, and it could break behind you. Uh, but the new cloud native build packs, they're, they're just kind of a different way of doing a Docker file style thing, right? The, the result is still an image, which is shard and isn't going to change, you know, on the output side. Okay. Yeah, that's, yeah. that's my defending build packs for today. So, so, um, so yeah, so this is all deploying everything by image digests, including, you know, the, for build packs, it's using the cloud native build pack stuff, um, uh, you know, with whatever builder you specified. And because it's by digest, uh, it actually won't work with uh, things like rebasing. I mean, in the same way that, you know, serving resolves tags to digest, right? You would need to stage a new revision if you rebased it. And so the things doing things like rebasing would need to interact with the um, uh, Canadian service lifecycle anyways, in order to stage a new revision if it were rebasing your application. But so the the digests that are being inserted there, uh, as Jules indicated, right, um, they aren't going to change out from under you. And my point about resolve is if you then take that and you deploy it across context, you should get exactly the same thing because, you know, it's checking that checksum every time it pulls that image. Thank you. Any other questions or comments? I saw a hand raised at one point. Yeah, I, I was wondering, uh, Matt, about this mink is uh, funny because uh, the, I don't know if you uh, if you know this project. This is called K3S. It's actually Kubernetes built into one binary. So I thought maybe build mink, <laughs> all of that, get talk, uh, K, uh, Knative, all Knative builds and all other bits into another binary and deploy just two pods, and yeah. you will have Kubernetes with Knative. Yes. Yeah. So, I mean, I would say, let's see, I, I would say it's somewhat similar to my rough understanding of that, right? K3S is building everything into a single binary. Um, Mink, Mink is effectively doing that for all of these sort of processes that are sort of compatible, right? So the way we've designed the controller architecture, right? It's all using shared main and it sort of figures out things like the informers and whatnot. It needs to start up. So Mink, the code for Mink before I added the CLI was, uh, well, uh, was basically just main.go. And it linked in a bunch of different entry points that it wanted to run as a single controller process. And then different config that sort of oriented things in uh, various ways. So, um, uh, like, you know, running the, the various data plans as si uh, well, different containers in the same sort of data plane pod, et cetera. But the way uh, Mink is combining all of those controller processes in the control plane pod um, is similar in principle to the idea of just link it all together into one binary. I don't think we want to do that for everything because I would really love it if our Q proxy sidecar, for instance, went on a diet. Um, but um, uh, you know, it's it's doing something sort of like that in in principle. Um, but I, I'm also sort of opposed to the idea that you need to combine everything into a single container in order to get that sort of tiny footprint. Um, since you know, I think I think the uh, the direction that things are headed in terms of sort of modern application development is you stop thinking about you know the fact that you have n containers, right? Um, <laughs> containers are an implementation detail, right? Like I I you know I'm a total container image nerd, and the goal of Co is to get people to stop thinking about them. So hopefully you know with things like being able to do this with build pack, well, unfortunately, Docker file is probably not going to help with that. But um, with things like build pack, hopefully you can have a higher level source oriented experience where people just stop worrying about how it goes into the container and um, you know just works TM. Um, but 